Hi, and thanks for dropping by Visual Art Photography Tutorials. If you're new to the channel, uh, we're really about two main things. One, inspiration, and two, new ideas. Because if you have inspiration, then you're going to come up with a lot of new ideas. And if you have a lot of new ideas, then you're going to be inspired. And if you're inspired, you are going to use your camera a lot. And you're going to do a lot of shooting. And really, that's what it's all about. So today, we are doing Christmas cactus, only we're going to do it macro style. We're going to get really, really close. Here's a Christmas cactus here. And you can pick them up in a lot of different places, whether they're, uh, whether it's a nursery or maybe uh, something attached to your hardware store, something like that, anywhere where they sell plants. These you will see a lot uh, in November and December of each year. Now, they flower basically in November and December, hence Christmas cactus, the name. Uh, but they're really nice as just a standard cactus all year round. So today we're going to get in really close and there's going to be a couple of ways we're going to do it. You're going to need a tripod, either a standard tripod or maybe a tabletop tripod. I'm using this, which is a tabletop easel. You don't have to use this, but you're going to see why I'm using it later on because I'm using it in tandem with this black velvet. This I'm going to be using as a background and I'm going to drape it over that easel that you just saw. Now, I like velvet because it absorbs light, but you don't have to use velvet and you don't have to use black. It's just a personal preference of mine. So, let's get going on macro photography, Christmas cactus. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be amazing as we start to get in really close to the Christmas cactus. As usual, comments and questions can be addressed down below. Don't forget your macro lens. Let's get going. Macro Christmas cactus. So we have our camera set up on the tripod and we're going to be focusing on the LCD. Now, if you're not quite sure how to focus on the LCD, I have a great video on that alone and it's going to be showing right up at the top there just click on that banner there if you don't know how to focus on the LCD okay now you see the flower set up you see the backdrop that velvet that black velvet that it's sitting on and as we move up we're going to see the black velvet as it sits on that easel and it makes for a really nice uh, condition to shoot this in so it's almost like a little bit of a warm-up shot as we just hone in and focus in on one flower. All right, and now you get an idea of what this beautiful flower actually looks like. It's very, very complex as you come down from the, the right-hand side and uh, it goes into this very complex flower. And you see the stamens and the pistil there as well. But we're doing macro photography, so we really want to get in a lot closer than this. So the second shot, we move in shot at f11 and focusing on the pistol itself uh, rendering the stamens some of them in focus some of them a little bit out of focus i could have gone to f16 or even f22 if i really wanted to make it sharp but it, it's funny for me in macro photography um, I, I kind of like to have some parts out of focus if possible but i really wanted that pistol to be very very sharp and it is okay so now we're really starting to get into the essence of this and you can see some of the pollen too up there on the uh, on the stamens reverse it go up top we're shooting down now we're right on top of this flower and we're shooting straight down and you get a different view of what this looks like but let's move in closer and there you have it okay now on this one I've tried to make really sure that the uh, some of the stamens are are clear all right and actually the pistol is some of it's a little bit out of focus some of it's in focus and of course the the petals up here are out of focus and nice and soft black background giving it a lot of drama there's a lot of contrast between what's going on with the flower and the background lighting of course is important uh, we'll talk about that in a moment the as you can see here i've changed the angle of it now I'm not using any flash. Now you can easily use, you can use on camera flash, you can use off camera flash, you can use macro ring lights. I've done that in the past, but in this I'm using just window lighting. That's what I'm using. There were two types of lighting that happened during this shoot. One was sunshine coming through the window. 
uh, which was happening here in these first few shots that you're seeing. The sun is not directly, however, on the plants, okay? It's not happening. But there is a lot of bright uh, light coming through the window. But I'm making sure not to have the sunlight directly on the flower. That would just sort of blow things out and, and give it a kind of a bleached look, which I didn't want. All right. I love using window lighting for my macro photography. As I said before, I have used flash uh, and with a great deal of success, but if the window lighting is right, I really enjoy it. Okay, here we go. We're even closer. We've got the flower on an angle just for a little bit of that diagonal dynamic effect that you get. The lighting is kind of warm. I'm going to show you when the lighting changes, the lighting will change and it will become overcast outside and the lighting coming in will be a little bit cooler and it, it will give you a different effect. Okay, here's an earlier part of the plant. It's, we were looking at it before, and I think it was, I think you can see it here, actually. Okay, and you can see it up there, in here. And now we're going to focus on it a little bit more here, just for a completely different look to the plant. This is shot at f2.8. The next one is at f11, and you see the difference in the depth of field here. All right, f11. And we move back into the, a little bit further up the plant so that you get some of the green as well. F2.8. Again, I kind of like that soft effect. Okay, now, this is at F16. Believe it or not, but it's so close uh, to, the, to, the, to the flower that the depth of field is very, very shallow. And all you're getting in focus is really just the tip of the, of the pistol here. And that's what I wanted because it gives you a 3D effect, right? Look at that. It looks like it's coming right out at you. And you, you can see in the background, you, you know, these are the, the, uh, the stamens and things like that. And the flower itself, the petals in the background, really out of focus, really soft. But this thing coming right out at you, it looks like it's coming right out of the screen almost, right? And that's the three-dimensional effect. Now, if you really want to enhance a three-dimensional effect, turn the flower or turn your camera to the side and having have it come out at a diagonal like this, and you really get a three-dimensional effect. It's almost, it's like it's reaching right out of the frame almost, right? And of course, I have focused right on the tip of the, of the, of the pistol. And I've shot this, not at F16, this is at, actually at F11. So again, to taste, try it at F16, try it at F22, try it at a really shallow depth of field, at a really large aperture, say, you know, maybe F4 or something like that, and see how you like it. Always to taste, always experiment. But just to say that when you put the image on an angle like this, it really can create a three-dimensional effect. Now, I was talking to you about different lighting. This is still with the sunlight. Now, here's what it looks like when the lighting changed outside, coming through the window was overcast, Completely different feel, right? Look at it. It's, it's a completely different feel. It's, it's a different mood. And this just shot at f2.8. Very shallow. I love the, the way in the background it looks almost like a cloud. and almost looks like everything's coming out of a cloud. Now, just to give you an example, the next one shot at f11. And it's much more clear. And I don't like it as much personally. But again, to taste, you may like that better. I prefer that. It's, uh, it's all up to the individual photographer, right? Always is, and that's the beauty of, of this craft. Okay, straight on. Focusing on the stamens. And you have all of these petals in the background. And it's a completely different way of looking at it. A completely different treatment. Again, just really concentrating on the petals of this beautiful flower. I know there are a lot of you macro maniacs out there, and we're always amazed when we see something up close. It's just something that the naked eye cannot see, or at least can't see so incredibly clearly. I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed bringing it to you. And until next time, I'm Ray Scott reminding you it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And I'll see you soon.